I request the volunteers to mute others. You can meeting ke baad, rather bees bees mein se baat hote rahenge. So please mute others. Anupriya, aapko bhi maine co-host bana diya. I request the volunteers to mute others. So, sir, I think we should start now. Already it is 7.10. Dr. Pal, uh, you are on mute. Uh, I think we should start now because it is uh, 7.10. Definitely, let's start. Okay. Uh, so, uh, among the doctors, one minute. Among the doctors, uh, you are there now. Have you start? The anchor, uh, we are requesting you to start. You are on mute, I believe. Audible now? Yes. Health is not something you can buy. However, it can be an extremely valuable saving account. A very good evening to ladies and gentlemen present here. I, Alicia Sadek. Heartly welcome you all to this initiative of the Advanced Healthcare Foundation at Audison Point. Our calcium webinar and interactive panel discussion awareness of muscle building associated with osteoporosis. We welcome all the Rotary Clubs participating with us in today's event. To start up the meeting, I would like to call Dr. Shreya Chattopadhyay, the Director of Advanced Healthcare Foundation, to share a few words with us. Thank you. Uh, I would request rather all the participants, if you uh, could please mute yourself, it will be great. Uh, thank you. So good evening. On behalf of Advanced Healthcare Foundation, I welcome you all in this event, Kalshi Am. 
we started doing this project calcium under expert guidance of dr ak pal who is head of orthopedic department in sskm hospital kolkata and uh, we are very thankful to associate with an eminent doctor like dr pal whatever i say about him uh, will not be sufficient actually he is not only a very efficient doctor but he is a noble person too with his guidance and our constant effort i am sure we can reduce the rate of osteoporosis from our country we are grateful to uh, the other doctors also who uh, helped us in uh, calcium project like dr sural dr bhaiwap singh dr sinjita datta uh, today i uh, welcome dr pal today i also welcome the rotary club uh, who uh, have already uh, associated with us and we have shared the uh, name of the rotary clubs in the uh, in our calcium banner as well so let me uh, just uh, give me uh, one minute i am also taking the opportunity to welcome all the rotary clubs uh, so they are uh, rotary club uh, Rotary Club of Abdurrahman uh, Kolkata, RC Baligonj, uh, RC Borash Borashat, RC Belur, RC Bidhanagar, uh, RC Calcutta Acropolis, uh, RC Calcutta uh, Abhinayan, uh, RC Calcutta uh, Chandogarh City, Calcutta Harmony, Calcutta uh, Thakurgachi, Calcutta Metro City, Calcutta Millennium. Uh, Calcutta Sun City, Dom Dom, and uh, Shonargaon, and Rotary Club of North Calcutta. So I cannot forget the name of the person who always support me, motivate me to organize this type of program. Adolescence. He is none other than Mr. Devi Prashad Bose. So I welcome uh, Devi da. Uh, today I welcome uh, also. the prathom complex uh, kamarhati kolkata they have joined hand with us i welcome all the children from the schools where we have already established our adolescence club to initiate this uh, kind of events because they are ultimately future citizens of india uh, and last but not the least i welcome all the volunteers of uh, adolescence club it is very heartening to see their enthusiasm and zeal at such young age thank you all and uh, specially thanks the head of adolescence club megha chattopadhyay who is doing her mbbs and kushi uh, who is doing uh, honors in psychology thank you all thank you anchor can you please proceed you are on mute thank you ma'am for your lovely words we would like to begin our panel discussion for today by inviting dr ak pal a professor at the department of orthopedic and traumatology IPG and ER SSKM Medical College and Hospitals from Kolkata West Bengal I request sir to say a few words Good evening to everybody so it is uh, it is very pleasant evening and I am very delighted to being invited by the advanced healthcare to for the awareness of the public awareness of this program that is the awareness the importance of the muscle building exercises all of you know so the, the body is the best the best gift of the nature or best gift of the god you can see so see this is in bengali it is called skarmuit hormone so we have to do the work which recognizes us which will remember which is which we can be remembered even after the passing off from the world so we have to do the work dedicated but the problem is see there the, the the gift which is which is given to us we actually underestimate 
so we have to we didn't walk at the at the fullest we didn't utilize our the muscles our movements at our fullest see i'm giving a simple example if i if, if anybody is asked to hold a glass of water in his hand for a long time so uh, so within 5 minutes it will remain same but if the same glass of water is kept hold for at least 1 hour after 1 hour it is looking very very heavy why same weight same weight on the on the on the glass is appears to become heavier why the same person holding the glass with heavier without any activity so why it is happened because of the inactivity that inactivity that reduces the capacity of the muscles to hold so we need movement so movement needs movement means the life once we stop to movement that is a other form of death so we have to move and that for the movement we require muscle with exercises so that is the importance of this evening so let us say i am very much thankful and dr sir chatopadha i am very delighted to have have her to this sort of program for the public awareness is extremely important because this that will cause significant relief of the society that will cause benefit of the individual benefit of the family as well as the benefit of the society as also well the nation thank you all thank you so much sir thank you anchor next please thank you sir i would like to request dr v singh senior orthopedic surgeon from varanasi to share his views i think dr v singh is facing some uh, network issue so we should proceed with the next okay uh, so with the permission of the esteemed panelists we would like to open the floor to question panel discussion I think first uh, we should know uh, whether I would request Dr. Paul uh, if he can uh, just say something about uh, why we are doing this event today and what is the scientific uh, explanation behind this. Please repeat your questions, please. Uh, number one is that uh, the important of this event because uh, whatever we did past days, that is only creation of awareness. But today we are doing something also muscle bending exercise. So, what is the importance of this, and uh, what are the scientific explanation behind uh, the whole thing? Exactly. So, yes. How? Why we do the movement? Why we do the move the exercises? This is most is a basic one. So this is a, I think is it a basic amenity of the human body? Yes. As as far we eat, drink, we sleep, at the same time we have to do some exercises, basic exercises. It is extremely important. How it helps? How it helps? This is one first one. It causes it it causes that the joints our joints remain healthy. Our joints basically it is responsible for movement. So basically, our the hip joints that is at the in between the femur and the pelvic bone, that the knee joint that is at the end of the our thigh, and also the our ankle joint these are the joints which causes the weight bearing and propulsion of the patient, propulsion of our body. So this is most important. So if we do the movement, that leads to some movement in between the bones, and these bones which form the joint these are it's actually covered by the small membrane which is known as the articular cartilage and believe me this articular cartilage is the most smooth component in the earth man made smooth smooth component in the earth is the teflon whereas this articular cartilage is almost 1000 times smoother than this this uh, articular this teflon so this is most important and once we get the movement the articular cartilage gets the nutrition how this articular cartilage for providing is almost frictionless that is zero friction movement so that we didn't feel any 1% of pain during out of the movement this articular cartilage is made by the nature which is devoid of the blood supply which is devoid of the nerve supply which is devoid of the lymphatic supply it doesn't have anything 
it gets nutrition only during the movement. During the movement, it that some synovial fluid which is generated inside the joint, which gets entry inside this articular cartilage, and that makes this articular cartilage healthier. And, and because of this articular cartilage during the movement, that there is no friction, almost frictionless, almost zero friction movement. That is how in our younger age, we didn't find any sort of pain during the movement. So this movement is absolutely necessary for making our articular cartilage healthier. So as we are grow growing older, our movement growing going to become very small. Uh, we, are, we are reducing our the movement. So the, as the movements are reducing, so that is how the articular cartilage got the new that that is devoid of the nutrition and ultimately getting become dry. Once it's going to become dry, it becomes irregular, and these irregular surfaces are going to become frictions with each other. That leads to pain. So that is the basis of there's a disease which is known as the osteoarthrosis, and that ultimately led leads to the severe painful range of the motion. And ultimately, that there's some nerve joints, especially the load bearing joints, may need replacement, either the hip replacement or the knee replacements. So, see what you saw that you rip. So, we have to concentrate on the movement to keep our articular cartilage healthier to avoid this sort of there is sinister consequences in the end of the end of the life where we don't have much much uh, money, don't have much our resources much manpower at the same time there are several problems like the, we need replacement that is one that is a physical next one is is the see the system once we do the movement our blood circulation increases and that increases the blood circulation through our, our heart which pumps the heart during the movement see when you move you when you run your heart rate will increase that indicates what your blood circulation all over the body increases that is how the different organs of the body gets nutrition through the blood so when the once the oxygen is getting inside the body so we if we increases the exercises increases the movement more oxygen comes inside the body it is being mixed in the blood and that oxygen with the blood is circulated all over the body by heart pumping action of the heart and so the all the system all the organs gets nutrition through this so if the movement is less less oxygenation inside our body the pumping action of the heart will be less so heart will be less powerful heart will remain weak that is a very bad bad news at the same time the other systems like the brain kidney lung everywhere they will less blood supply so we have to do the exercises so to keep our joints healthy to keep our the, all the systems healthy not only that if we do the exercises that increases that improves our mental power see our human being is not the body it is the composition of the body it is a mind as well as it is a higher hierarchy over the mind that is the intellect so ma'am that is in bengali it is called manush man plus hush those those who hush means the consciousness you require the consciousness in of yourself consciousness of the world consciousness of your neighbors so it is extremely important so if you do the exercises that increases your mental power see this is a very good example once you are very much we are getting very bored so let us walk so some some with the friends if you do the walking in outside your mind becomes afresh so it is very very practical significance so if you do the exercises regularly your mental faculty will improve that will increases your mental power as also at the same time that will increase your intellect so it is also that increase. So how the exercise helps? The exercise helps not only the the joints, muscles, and the body, the joints. It also helps the power, increases the power of the heart. It increases the function of the different system, and at the same time, that increases the mental power, the mental capacity, as also the intellectual power. So there's several advantages. So we have to do that. Thank you, Dr. Pal. Uh, volunteers, next question. If you have any question, otherwise I have so many questions. Uh, Sir, yeah. who can... Uh, please ask. Anupriya, you were talking Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I had a question listening to this Dr. Pal's, you know, uh, information. So, um, as an adolescent, I was very curious to know ki, which are the specific muscles in the human body 
which especially requires such kinds of exercises absolutely it's a very very good question see for propulsion we require some specific large muscles especially our trunk muscles as also the thigh muscles the gut muscles especially if we do the in the scientific our thigh muscles basically there are two basically the two joint muscle the muscles which crosses the two joints these are extremely important because they have to work more during the propulsion so this i can take that is the one is the quadriceps that is thigh muscles front thigh muscles another is the biceps that is the that is the hamstring that is the back thigh muscles at the same time the calf muscles calf muscles basically the its gastroceleus which is considered the brake of the brake of the human being if the human being runs any human which runs very fast but he has to suddenly stop so that is the muscle which is required for the human to sudden stop that is the brake of the human body that is the gastroceleus so is gastroceleus that is the the, the quadriceps that is front thigh muscles <clears throat> that is the back thigh muscles the hamstring as also the the back muscles especially the muscles which concert, consider the back side of the of the trunk of the body as also the abdominal muscles these two muscles for for the trunk these abdominal muscles as also the back muscles both are required why i am i am giving the example do you see the lamp post lamp post remain erect once there are two ropes are tied on the both the sides in a same same concentration same power same force if one rope is is tied with a bit less force those so that that is in that case what will happen the, the lamp post will go on that side so in the in that case the other rope has to work more and ultimately that rope may may uh, torn may be torn in the future so that is how our spinal cord that is spine is acting as a lamp post uh, the, that requires two ropes in the front the abdominal muscles on the back that is the back muscles so we have to exercise we have to do the exercise of the both so some it is a very very false belief that we neglect our abdominal muscles we should not do that we have to increase the power of the abdominal muscles as also the back muscles so to keep our spine straight so and the upper limbs for the upper limbs this is the most important muscles as you can see here so this is the shoulder girdle muscles this is trapezius as also the deltoid these are the large muscles so the trapezius is a very very large strap muscles and also there is a latissimus dorsi on the back side these three muscles require constant exercises there are several uh, i will show you the how in single uh, single pose single um, category of exercises which you can exercise all the large muscles these are the muscles to be concentrated upon yes please so well, as you said that we have to do these types of exercises could you more specifically specify what kind of exercises we should do to like uh, relax and stay active with our abdominal and spinal muscles yes yes so first of all we have to do who can do the exercise yes every ages every ages can do the exercises this is extremely important unfortunately our next generation they are they are they are very 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 neglected about that they are very much fond of the indoor games so this is absolutely bad news and they are also concerned they are very uh, very uh, uh, lovable for this fast food it's extremely dangerous so avoid of the outdoor games as also there are uh, this fast food both of both make their bones very weak and the muscles are also very weak. so those ages they have to do the large muscle building exercise core strengthening exercise like the running jumping swimming everything for the adult those who are working they don't get any time again i can show what are the exercises they can do that i can share my screen i can i can show them there are several exercises they can do at least at least 30 to 40 minutes exercise general exercises free hand exercises and specific muscle building exercises for the those muscles i have already told so there are quadriceps exercise hamstring exercise and the gastrocele i'll show you in during the screen sharing so this sort of exercises they can do to build up their muscles actually in those in those ages there are two things 
muscle should not be concentrated on increasing the strength but also their flexibility should be increased the body should be flexible till the death during the older age that is extremely important as the body is getting older the body is every muscles becoming very stiff and these stiff muscles that causes the pain during the movement the body should be very made very flexible and there are several stretching of the body free any free hand exercises stretching of the, the stretching techniques are there to keep our body flexible this is most important so and the, the old age the old there are several uh, several exercises that can do except this this sort of code that is of uh, these muscle building exercises these muscle building exercises cannot be done in the old age and especially those who are heart cardiac problem so muscle building exercises should not be done in those in those ages but in all ages especially the old age they can do the walking especially the brisk walking for at least 30 to 45 minutes per day so in the either in the morning or in the evening it is extremely important brisk walking so that there are some sweating develops until the sweating develops this is the this is the, fat, the fatigue limit or up to that limit that any any person if walks regularly that is the most important exercises in all ages even in in the, in the cardiac patient also and the, the, the cardiac surgeons they also advise those to walk either in the small space or in the large uh, the, the increasing space depending on the cardiac problem if there's a cardiac problem is much more they can walk with a small pace till there is a problem if there's a problem they can sit they can take rest and after that uh, disadvantage that uh, problem is over they can continue similarly if there's some joint pain in that case also the walking with speed is is not advised especially the, the high impact exercises like the uh, the running like the jumping this should this sort of exercise should not be done for those who has joint pain especially after 45 years or 50 years of age in those patients actually we we actually advise very small impact exercise the walking either in the small piece that depending on the individual individualized to which speed he is comfortable they can walk up to the sweating stage once the sweating starts they can stop that is the most important next one there are several other exercises especially the core building exercises that can be that can depend on different uh, a, a different a different different age groups in the older age groups especially the core building exercises the swimming is the most important uh, uh, exercise is the whole body exercises and the another is the dancing dancing is extremely extremely good whole body exercises so if we continue the dancing till in the old age they can be benefited this is most important the swing dancing cycling even the cycling so, so that is why in the western countries there are several other there is a separate cycle track apart from this main road so that the every ages of the person they can use this cycle track this is most important so these are the core building exercises next is the cardio respiratory for the older age it is extremely important cardio respiratory exercise i'll i'll come what is the cardio respiratory exercises that is that that is the extremely important exercise which increases the oxygenation of our body of which most important is the pranayam that is most important the breathing exercise i will come what is breathing and pranayam this will come in later on and, and another is this yoga pranayam exercise breathing exercise and the yoga and this is this is most important and then another important exercise is tai chi exercises i what is tai chi exercise? i'll come what is tai chi exercises this tai chi exercise is extremely important to reduce the stress stress of our, we are very stressed in all the days you know every time of our day and this tai chi exercises is extremely important to reduce the stress physically as also the mentally this is basically it is called this meditation in movement or medication in the movement during the movement we can do the medication meditation that is the, that is that is considered as a medication or during the movement in the movement we can do that so that is the uh, exercises which can be advised in the older age group that is the tai chi exercises i will come i will make the life easier that is actually basically chinese person that that, that is that, that requires some trainers but i can uh, modify that i have already modified that exercises for, for our patients our, our neighbors and also the family members thank you good evening sir
my question was are there any prerequisites for the exercise like any equipment or conditions required is a, a, absolutely good absolutely good questions yes yes so you have to do that suppose we are awakened in the morning we have to start exercises but just after the awakening we should not do that see there are actually we can it is a half there is a three minutes three minutes test three minutes test what is that just once we just we got up from the slip just wait wait for one minute this is extremely important wait for one minute in the bed just like a, a get up is suddenly it is not required this should not be done that is what first minute second minute you have to keep your you just touch your your ground and sit for one moment sit for one moment this is most important sit for one moment keep your body acclimatized and another third moment is just stand and stand for one minute this is the three minutes, three, three minutes advice just after the waking from the sleep. That three minutes advice should be followed even in the midnight. That is why we can avoid this stroke, sudden stroke that can happen in the midnight. Just once the, the patient is uh, just uh, wants to go to the toilet, suddenly there are severe uh, pain that, so that uh, he, he just get up very suddenly and just rush to the toilet that is that is the cause of sudden adrenaline rush and there's a sudden increase of heart rate if the heart rate is or heart is already weak that can lead to heart failure and sudden cardiac attack there is a three minutes advice it is extremely important so one minute stop in the bed one minute just keep your keep touch your ground and then one minute stand then start your walking that is one second always before doing the any exercises always we have to check the health status whether the person is completely healthy or partially healthy or some diseased and depending on that we have to categorize the exercises this is extremely important that is why there are some advices it is it is seen in the in the tv television in some internet that this is this sort of exercise should be done and this and the, uh, any persons they start doing the exercises no and that is the most dangerous thing every exercise is not for all all persons the exercise should be individualized so depending on the health status we have to choose our exercises that is in that sense we can we can require a trainer or a advisor this is most important next is the we have to be just before any exercises we have to do the adequate hydration without is with our body if the body is severely dehydrated and we start the exercises that will get that is an absolute mess we should not do that and next is we have to stop those exercises which causes the pain or discomfort so don't ignore any pain or discomfort in your body while during the exercises Okay, the, even after the trainer's advice, if there is any pain is complained of, we have to stop those exercises. Next is the what is the gadget or the dress in which dress you can start the exercises. Always exercise should be started in a very in, in, a, in a loose dress. Suppose in the winter season, wearing the sweater or the coat, we cannot do the exercises. Even in the summer also, we have to take a small vest or, or dingy like that and we have to do the exercise like that okay this is most important so well hydration and, and last one is most important is the adequate warming up what is what do you mean by that adequate warming up is absolutely necessary before any physical exercises now, apart from this this uh, cardio respiratory but the, all the physical exercises require some adequate warming up because just before starting the exercise our all muscles are started out uh, sleeping we have to we have to awaken our, our muscles just by the increasing the blood supply. Now, how much warming up is required? This is most important. It's scientifically proved that there is increasing of temperature at least one degree to four degrees centigrade in our muscles is required for its optimum function. So how do you know that so your temperature is elevated and how? So that is, so just up, just before the exercises, you can, you can touch your palm, your palm. This palm is, is actually basically the most 
most uh, uh, heated area of our body, the outer part. So just keep your uh, palm on the on your forehead and uh, the of the palm. Do so some warming up, like did some free hand exercises. So after uh, five minutes warming up, you can do again. Suppose see their temperature will increase. So and that increase temperature, so that is sufficient enough is for uh, starting your exact uh, accurate exercises. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I have a question for these exercises. Do we need any expert yes. guidance or help? Means we can uh, just learn it from YouTube or we need real expert guidance? Yes. Because yes, nowadays we are uh, just learning from YouTube only. Yes, yes, yes. That is a very good question. Just I have answered it. That is a small nutshell. So actually the, the exercises should be individualized. Specific physical exercises should be individualized. You can do these cardio respiratory exercises in all ages. Code building exercise, I have already told, they can be done. And, and that why this is generalized. Suppose it's swimming. Before swimming, one fitness certificate is required. If you want to get admitted in the swimming, so any swimming club, they require a fitness certificate. So if you are fit, you can do this sport, sport uh, strengthening exercises by your own. But for the specific physical exercises, that should be individu individualized. Every exercise is for everyone. You don't know. The patients may have some cardiac problem. Patient may have some specific muscle problem. Patient may have some uh, some respiratory, some, uh, some abdominal problem, or patient may have some injury of the muscles, specific muscles. And for those specific muscles, if if there is some subclinical injury, sub this is one term is known as the delayed onset muscle injury, delayed onset muscle sore, or delayed onset muscle injury. So that can happen without any any exact symptoms. That means I'm I'm telling a simple example. Suppose if the any person doesn't have the experience of walking for one kilometers for last uh, ten years, and patient any any subject has to work for one kilometer for the last yesterday okay for last for the first two days he may not feel any discomfort but on the third day patient may have some severe pain on the on, the, on his muscles especially the back muscles thigh muscles and the calf muscles as i've already told these muscles are based, they are actually two joint muscles and they are actually becoming they have to work much more and they become very much fatigued and they, as they are working much more, so they can have this sort of delayed onset muscle sore, T O M S, delayed onset muscle sore. And if they, any person continues the physical exercises in that position, so that is that causes severe muscle injury. So we have to be very much careful about it. So delayed onset muscle sore uh, that can lead to that can bring to muscle injury in the in the in the long run. So that is most important. So every exercise should be individualized so ideally the patient uh, the, every human should get advice that what which sort of exercises should be done for the special muscle building but for the core core strengthening exercise as also the cardio respiratory exercise they can do by their own depending on the several there are several uh, uh, programs are already there they can follow that but for the physical exercises all the physical exercise should be should be individualized Thank you, sir. It was very relevant for me to know about. <clears throat> Any other question? If you do not, then I have one question. Uh, you have some question? Please ask. If yes, someone sir. wants to ask question in uh, Bengali also, you are welcome. Most welcome. I have a question, sir. Sir, I wanted to ask yes. if Vitaligo was directly related to the lack of calcium pardon please repeat your question sir i wanted to ask that if, is vitiligo directly related to the lack of calcium in the body vitiligo vitiligo isn't it is it is it vitiligo yes, sir, is yes, directly related with the calcium is it is it the question yes sir yes vitiligo is a, basically it is a it is a depigmentation of the skin 
this is a depigmentation of the skin, but it, it is doesn't have any relation with the calcium concentration or calcium concent or, or, or metabolism of our body. That is that there are some diseases, there are some uh, some uh, some congenital diseases, some chromosomal abnormality that can lead to these sort of problems. But it doesn't have any bearing on calcium related issues. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. I had one question. Yes. Uh, oh. Ma'am, what, uh, sir, what is basically the importance of calcium in our body? Yes, that is a, that is a very, very important and severe, uh, yes, very important issues. It's calcium, basically, that is C. The C for C for four function. Every function starts with the C. First is the consolidation of the bone. It requires the strength of the bones and the muscles. It's so it's consolidation. C for consolidation. Next is the C for the the conduction. Conduction of the nerves. So it's the calcium requires for conduction of the nerves. So the, the its calcium is deficient. Their conduction of the nerve conduction is slowed. So there are some, several headaches. There are some, we have feel irritability. We feel very weak. We feel very, very apathetic like that. So that is the conduction. First is the consolidation. Next is the conduction. Next is the contractility of the muscles. Muscles, so for contractility, for contraction, it requires much calcium. So if the calcium is less, our contractility is less. So muscle power, so contraction power will be less. So that what will happen? So that is how the patient will become very uh, feel very very uh, flabby, very very that means weak. There is a very uh, so loss of energy. So if the smooth muscles, even of the gut, in the gut, that is in our uh, gastrointestinal system, muscles, the gastrointestinal system, if they become weak, what will happen? There will be indigestion. So that this these muscles of our gastrointestinal system is maximally active. Even if the if the patient if the, if we are sleeping. They are working. So this, so this is extremely important. So in, in, in absence of the calcium, this contractility of the muscles of the gastrointestinal system is, is weak and that leads to indigestion, that leads to diarrhea or that leads to constipation. So that is a severe problem of that. Lastly, C. Another C is for coagulation of the blood. C for coagulation of the blood. So if calcium is required for coagulation of the blood. So if it is deficient, the blood coagulation is delayed. So that is increased blood. Uh, there is a the blood loss from a, if any, any any cut in our body. There is a the, 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 it continues to lose blood for long time. It it, it it hampers in blood coagulation. So calcium C it requires four function. In every function starts from C. One for consolidation of the bone. Next is contractility of the muscles. Next is conduction of the nerves as also there is a coagulation of the blood. So calcium, there's a fourfold important function of the body. Kyujudi Bangla Kuna question Kurtasan Kurtabadin Koyagar Hindi me koi Pusina Chata hai, please welcome. Please feel free to Sir, ask. I would like to ask a question. Uh if he or uh, if any person he or she is suffering already suffering from joint pain, does there any prevention he or she need before exercise or something like that? Sir, you are not audible. Yes, yes. Yes, please. Please repeat the question. Sir, I asked if a person, he or she is suffering, already suffering from joint pain, then he or she might need any prevention before exercises or any precaution he or she must keep in mind. Is yes, there any precautions very, or something? Yes, it is a very, very good question because even after the 45 years or 40, 45 years old, so everybody has some little bit pain, everybody in the parts of the body, especially the weight bearing joints in the hip, in the knee. So in that case, which sort of exercise should be done? Is it your question? Yes, it's a very good question. So in the, those parts, in most of the persons above, above 40, 45 years, they have some, we have some joint pain, especially our fathers, our sisters, 
those who have passed, crossed 45, 40, 45 years is a perimenopausal period. They have con that, uh, uh, that experienced this sort of pain because of this lack of the female hormone that has, they are approaching to menopause. So this female hormone which is required for the strength of the muscles as also the bone as it is getting reduced that leads to severe weakening of the bone as also the muscles and that can lead to some pain. So which sort of exercise should be done during the painful episodes? Yes, during the painful episodes, we have to reduce some, some activities which causes the pain. Suppose you are feel, feeling pain in the knee. So in that case, we have to avoid squatting as sitting cross-legged. So for the pain in the, in the knee joint, we have to we avoid the squatting as also the sitting in cross-legged. <clears throat> for the back pain, for the back pain, we have to avoid forward bending. That is, there is, uh, we have to uh, carry weight from the front. We have to wait, we have to carry, we have to lift the weight from the ground by sight. We have to keeping our spine straight. We have to just lean back, just by the side to keep anything, to keep anything above from the ground. So that is the way to heal. We have, this is the way to keep our joint, injured or painful muscles less painful this is most important next if we have to do if we do do the exercise at all we have to do this static exercise static means there are several muscle exercises one is static exercise and that is a dynamic exercise see as a, as a, in our wrist muscles in the wrist we are if we make a firm wrist firm wrist grip see this there is no movement is occurring see there is no movement is occurring but still there are some contraction you can feel See, so there is a movement is occurring without movement, without uh, changing the, the, the changing the joint motion, isn't it? So it is known as the isometric exercise. Iso means the same, metrons means the length. See, the length of the muscle is same, but at the same time we are doing the exercise. This isometric exercise or this static exercise. Another exercise is this dynamic exercise. See, this is the dynamic exercise. This is the, the we are we are contracting. So that the muscle is contracting and the, the length is changed. That is why it is known as the dynamic exercise. During the painful episode, we always concentrate on this static exercise. So in that case, what are the static exercises? I will show in my uh, in my uh, lecture in my uh, slides. So in during the painful episode, always do do always do the static exercise. Don't do the dynamic exercise because I already told. So we have to we have to discard those exercises which causes pain. So that is why, if that that muscle causes the pain, we should not move that those muscles. We should we, we can contract the muscles, keeping the length same. That is the we can encourage the static exercise or the isometric exercise. This is most important. Even in painful condition, we can do that. Why well, it is it has to be done because in the pain reduces the spasm in any body. Uh, in any pain occurs in any part of the body, the muscles around that painful area goes into spasm. That is a natural spleen. Nature tries to keep those muscles immobile so that that leads to less pain. So pain leads to spasm. That means the no movement. And from the no movement, that leads to more pain. So pain, spasm, pain, spasm. That is a pain spasm cycle continues with each other. This is the pain spasm cycle. And that pain spasm cycle can only be cut off or only be broken with the help of exercises. That exercises, that static exercise that reduces the pain, that reduces the spasm and that, that reduces spasm that causes reduces the pain. So the pain spasm cycle that can be cut off during the painful episode by the static exercise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. But I have one question. Uh... Just you told that we should not bend forward if we have back pain. So we should not do the exercise like sit up also because there we actually bending forward. Exactly, exactly. So yes. during the severe painful episode, we should not do the exercise. I am repeating again. During painful episode, we should not do any sort of dynamic exercise. Dynamic exercise means where that a joint motion is the joint, that the motion of the joint is to movement. That movement should not be done if there is a painful. So in that case, how will do? How will do the exercises? There is a very simple exercise I can I can show to all. That is the sitting push back exercise. So that is we can do the exercises even without any sort of movement. So that is 
I I already advised the, all the or, or patients, those who have back pain, during the painful episode to do that, just to sit on a chair, the straight back chair, to keep the chair by the side of the wall. So in the back, there will be wall, there will be wall, and there's a straight back chair, and to keep our hand by the side of the body, just push your push your head back on the on the wall. Just push your back over the chair and push your both the elbows on the back over the wall and keep your both the knees opposed with each other and push your leg on the on the floor. See, there is no movement is occurring at all. So that is we are we are we are trying to move our all the muscles from the neck, from the back, from the shoulder, as also from the thigh, as also from our, our gastrosolia, that is calf muscles. The same exercises without doing any sort of movement. So during the painful episode, we should not do this sort of. Uh, there is a there is a, any any uh, any don't that's don't go talk like that or any sort of movement in the dynamic exercises. But this is a very simple exercise. This is actually I'm um, popularize this exercise that is known as the sitting push back. Just sitting in a straight back chair against the wall and push on the back. Push the push your head, push your back, push your both the elbows on the against your wall, and push your both the uh, lower lip against your against the uh, ground. So this is a very very simple exercises. So in the most uh, the, some persons having the pain in multiple areas, in the neck muscles, in the back muscles, as also thigh muscles. The same exercises that can exercise all the muscles, and it is just hold it in this manner and just count. 1 to 20, keeping your respiration normal. This is, I am again, again repeating, just press your head, press your back, press your both the uh, elbows against the wall on the back and push your both the lower limbs against the ground. And in this manner, hold it for one to count it, 1 to 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 20. Okay, keeping your respiration normal, just 20. And in this manner, at least 10 times per hour. So that can be done even in any, any part of, so even in the home, in the office, in the, in a, even in a running car, even in a bus, even in a train, they, everybody can do that. <coughs> so everywhere they can do that. So this is known as the sitting pushback exercise. This is 10 times per hour. This is almost, that can be done uh, as a part of a life that can exercise all of the uh, large muscles of the body. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Um, so, listening to your questions and your answers, I had this thought in my mind, and this actually comes from one of my own experiences, that uh, the house health that I have in my house, she has been experiencing like back pain, and in a way, she doesn't take food that's nutritively rich in calcium. So, what can I do as a person to help her out in such situations? Yes, uh, there is some back pain, neck pain, and also uh, there is, uh, he requires some diet management, isn't it? Diet advices. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, for the back pain, yeah, I'm coming with the back pain. See, the, I already told for the back pain, once there is severe painful episodes, we should not do any, any sort of exercise which causes the movement. That's just exercise. We have shown it. That also, that is a, that is, that is useful for neck pain, back pain, and also thigh pain. All these, these three can be taken in a single manner. If you do regularly 10 times per hour, that is most important. That is, there are several specific exercises of the back, back pain. The, the, actually, back pain, there are two types, three types of back pain. One is the mechanical back pain, another is the infective neoplastic type of back pain, and a third is the inflammatory type of back pain. So all the if all the diseases can be categorized in these three groups. One is the mechanical, that is where there is a structural alteration. It's suppose I'm giving the example like the disc prolapse, or there are some spondylolisthesis, that is that there is some uh, structural defect of the spine that can lead to this sort of mechanical pain. There are some inflammatory pain means that is some uh, bath, the bath, the bath, bath, the bath, the bath, the bath, the bath, the bath, the inflammatory pain. That is immune complex disease related. 
like rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, this sort of diseases that can lead to this sort of inflammatory pain. Another type of pain that can occur that is severe problematic, that is infective and neoplastic. Infective means suppose there are uh, some biogenic infection or the tuberculosis, tubercular infection, or there are some in inflammatory, that is a neoplastic, like some, uh, some cancer, cancer pain. So, first of all, there is a very mild, there is a mechanical pain. How do you know which sort of pain? Everybody can uh, can, uh, can, can reassess by their, themselves. See, the mechanical pain is that there is the most mild and there is the most uh, curable pain. That means once the pain is aggravated by the activity and is relieved by the rest, once they take rest, it is absolutely, it is a, almost, it is completely relieved, almost completely relieved. So, if it is aggravated by the activity, relieved by the rest, that is the mechanical pain. The most important cause is the spondylosis. I think everybody have heard this, this uh, terminology. It is the lumbar, lumbar yes, spondylosis, sir. a cervical spondylosis like that. So this is the most common disease, this is the mechanical pain. This is the most important. Next is the next, uh, you say it's the inflammatory pain. That's a path related, that is, that is arthritis related. They are the rheumatoid arthritis or the ankylosing spondylitis. So if it is related with this, this sort of pain, the pain occurs at the rest and is relieved by the activity. And this sort of the, this sort of individuals, they remain comfortable when they are acting, they are moving. When they are taking rest, they have severe pain. So they, they actually they, they have a sleepless life, night because at the middle of the night, they, they are, the sleep becomes disturbed during the change of posture in the bed. So they, they can feel severe pain. So this, this is the group. Uh, so, so the, in those cases, this is the group where the, there is a rest pain relieved by activity. So they're just opposite to mechanical pain. So if this sort of uh, problem occurs in any person, so always consider that may have some arthritis or path. Because so this is the arthritis of the path. And last one is the most is the most severe. So if the pain presents all duration, that is throughout the day, it is not really at all. See, always, always consider that is a very bad significance. There is no relieving factor. The activity may increase the pain, but even after taking the adequate rest, pain is not subsided. That is a very, very bad significance that may be related with the either infection or there is some cancer. Infection and cancer, that, that is the causes continuous pain. There is no relieving factor. Again, I'm repeating, if there is a mechanical pain like spondylosis, there is an activity increases the pain, and rest the almost relieves the pain. Activity is aggravated the pain and rest relieves the pain. In, in inflammatory or bath related, arthritis related, just opposite. Rest increases that pain and activity relieves the pain. And if it is a, a, it is a pain persists throughout the day, it's a continuous pain, not relieved at all, unless it has it has to be taken some medicine or some injection. So it is it is it is uh, so. So, uh, so the so there is uh, the no relief. So that is a very very bad significance. That indicates there is a possibility of infection or the or there is some neoplasia. There is a cancer. So if it is a back pain is related with a mechanical pain, which is common. That is I'm asking. So in that case, so there are there are two again there are two types. Patient may complain of pain during active during walking, and this pain during walking that uh, patient may complain of. In the rest, that is absolutely no pain. Just this, he starts walking. After walking for long period, either five minutes or ten minutes or twenty minutes, patient complains of pain, and just once he stop the movement, pain relieves. That is one variety. Another variety is just his once the rest there is no pain. Once he starts movement, patient is complaining of pain. At the beginning, patient is complaining of pain. Once he continues the move activity, there is no pain. So in the first category. Once there is a pain, no rest pain and pain is complained only after walking for some time, that is that is known as the neurogenic claudication or the in, in colloquial term it is known as the sciatica. It is known as a sciatica. Okay. So in the side, if the patient is complaining of sciatica, so we have to we have to consider there are some flexion exercise should be done. So we have to increase our abdominal muscles. So we have to increase the flexion. This is the, this is the flexion. That is, if we bend forward, that is known as the flexion. If we if we if we uh, if we if we bend backward or stretch backward, that is known as the extension. 
so if the patient is complaining of pain after some time and it is relieved by the rest that is the known as the that is type 1 mechanical pain that is due to the neurogenic claudication or the sciatica so in that case we have to strengthen our abdominal muscles by flexion exercise just we uh, just have to flex the i will show what is the flexion exercise flexion exercise but if the patient is complaining of pain initially after the during just starting at the at the just at the movement so in that case the, what is the what is the problem that problem is the muscle is weak we have to strengthen the muscles on the back muscles so how, how the back muscles are strengthened by extension exercise that is it to stretch backward we have to stretch backward so the extension exercise our back muscles should be strengthened much more than the abdominal muscles but if the patient is a healthy person so I, I again i'm repeating we have to strengthen both the abdominal muscles and also the back muscles so this is most important if the healthy person they have to concentrate on both the abdominal and the back muscles if the there's a mechanical pain that is sciatica that is patient is complaining of pain in the lower in the both the lower limb pain is much much more on the on the lower limb than the back that and it is complained of after walking for some time so and it is lit by the rays that is a sciatica we have to ab increase our abdominal muscles but if the, the patient is pain is complained of just after starting the movement patient sitting there is no pain once he starts movement patient is complaining of pain that means there's weakening of the back muscles so you have to increase the back muscles uh, power so this is the, uh, the this group of exercises should be individualized depending on the complaint all right sir thank you for your uh, information any other query hello am i audible yes please okay uh, Sir, uh, my question has two parts. Uh, so since uh, the discussion is about joint pain, could you talk about osteoporosis also? And the second part is, you talked about uh, joint pain in women in the uh, perimenopausal and postmenopausal period. So there are cases where uh, women uh, get their ovaries or, um, before that. So uh, are there chances, more chances for these women to get osteoporosis and joint pain? Just repeat your last part. Uh, the second part. Should I repeat yes. the second part? Okay. Yes. So first, you... first question is. First question is about osteoporosis. Okay, I'll I'll come in the osteoporosis. Why it, it is common in uh, perimenopausal age group, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and the, and uh, and the second part is there are women who get their ovaries and uterus uh, removed before that due to uh, several reasons like cysts or something like that. So uh do these women have more chances of getting joint pain in the future? Absolutely, absolutely. It's a very practical question. Yes. See, what is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is basically, osteo means the bone. Por porosis means it's a porous. Osteoporosis means bones, your bones becomes porous. So it is compactness. I've already told what is the function of the calcium. It increases the compactness or increases the strength of the bone. Once that there is, a, who maintains that? That is the, your sex hormone. Sex hormone is the estrogen. See, this is, it is an amazing fact is in the, both the sexes, both the, I'm again repeating, in both the sexes, estrogen is the main hormone which maintain the bone strength. Now you can ask how it is possible in, in men. Is that does the man has estrogen? Yes, yes, man has estrogen. See, at that at the tissue level, this main hormone, which is the testosterone, it is converted to estrogen, and that is estrogen. See, this is the nature. Why the female has given this? It is the responsibility of this increasing the in the number of uh, mankind in the in the world. Why the woman has chosen? Because he is the most suitable uh, selected by the nature, and that is why nature has become very much, uh, very much. Uh, um, it is uh, kindful, and he has given this estrogen. That estrogen is the basic that these bones is a basically it is acts under the influence of the estrogen in the both the sexes. In the female, they are they are they're directly they are getting the benefit up to the, the, the age of the menopause. And the men, actually, men actually they are getting the benefit till the, the 60 or 70s. But that is the, the, the function is basically the estrogen, and that's testosterone hormones, it is converted to estrogen, and that and in this. And this estrogen, once it is being converted, 
and that is acting as a st straw strength for the for their uh, bones and the muscles for the main so so that and, and in, in this in this explanation remains there's some transgender activity that is how some men appears as a behavior we behave, behave like a female we have like a, a female like that if this conversion is much more and this at the tissue level the, the estrogen level is much more that uh, that uh, the, the, the the nature of the man he will behave like a female female person you understand so that is why so female is required the, the estrogen is required for the compactness of the muscles as also the uh, the bones and that is maintained up to the menopause so at the perimenopausal period period what is happening so in the perimenopause once the estrogen level is getting reduced so but the bones becomes porous so the porous it has a bone cells as also the matrix the whole mass whole the bone unit is going to become devoid of that and that leads to osteoporosis not only that the muscle number of the muscles is going to become less that is known as the sarcopenia sarcopenia that is why osteoporosis is not a disease of the bone it is also a disease of the muscle this is most important so the, that muscle what is happening suppose uh, the a, 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 suppose a girl it has a hand number that it, it is uh, quadriceps has 100 muscle fibers at a, at her age of 30 years but at the age of 45 once that menopause occurred so this number of muscle fibers in his quadriceps remain as uh, maybe 60 or 50 and that is due to lack of estrogen number of muscle fiber is getting reduced in day, day by day that is the that is the happening to that is the uh, done by the nature so, uh, so how can we get rid of that so we can increase the power of this rest 60 percent muscle fiber which is up to present at this age that is why there's some some uh so that is why so the persons has been getting older they become very uh, weak day by day as the number of muscle fibers is going, going to become less not only that if there are bones that become porous so becomes very small very soft as that especially the spine there are 33 vertebra if this vertebra is, is, is reduced in height at least three, uh, three millimeter three or four millimeter so that 33 vertebra 33 into three see how many how many centimeter it is reduced that is why it is called the human going to become dwarf at the age of box. That is why you can easily observe that your mother, grandmother, so they're, they're going to become dwarf as they're growing older. Why? Because of that. It's osteoporosis. And it is there is a diagnostic test is if this height is reduced by three centimeter, even without symptoms. So that is the first sign of osteoporosis. So in this perimenopause period, if any 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 woman reduces the height of three centimeter or more, that that is the most significant sign of osteoporosis. Be aware of that. Osteoporosis gives some signal before going to become symptomatic. Once the symptoms develop, that is a too late. The several the bones has become osteoporotic, so they become very much uh, uh, cautious about it. So that is the that is the first sign. Another sign is getting the, the foods going to become stuck in between the teeth. So that is that ha, that can happen in both the male and the female. That is also the that is the early feature of osteoporosis. So see the, the this the, the the our our mouth our our the teeth that requires firm firm uh, force to keep the keep it in in mind because they require significant pressure all over the uh, all over uh, the, throughout the day. So once they are osteoporotic, the bone, the, 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 the spaces in between the teeth becomes increased. So there is stuck, uh, the foods are getting stuck, especially the meat or any, 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 any sort of vegetables getting stuck in between the uh, teeth. And if it occurs, that is also a feature of osteoporosis, fear of that. And another, uh, the, another uh, very simple test I'm going to uh, tell now. So this is a very screening test. So every woman, every woman over 45 should do that so to, to know whether she is going to be osteoporotic or not. That is the, the sit and get up test. Sit in a chair for at least 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, try to get up like this. So if during this get up, if you, if you require to uh, hold the hand, you hold the hand with the help of the hand, that means 
your the, the strength of the muscles especially the trunk muscle is less and that is the that is the evidence of sarcopenia as i have told you okay sit for 10 minutes after 10 minutes as as any person to get up suddenly and check up whether she is using her hands during the getting up from sitting position if the if she uses her hands during this getting up from the sitting position that indicates her trunk muscles especially the back muscles thigh muscles waist muscles are very weak that indicates the feature of sarcopenia which is the most important feature of osteoporosis that is the screening test you can do in every omen over 45 years this is the screening test so there is a question of the first part next part is those who are undergone the total hysterectomy and the bilateral salpicoporectomy that is the all the uterus and the ovaries are removed yes those persons is very very prone to develop osteoporosis in very earlier stage so it is beware of that in those cases do the screening test not only the screening test there are some blood tests are there you can do that and there is a one another test is that dexa scan dexa scan they can tell the exact blood that's osteoporotic feature of your spine as also the femur neck which is which is the more prone to develop fracture neck of the femur fracture so before that this dexa scan can tell and there are one uh, one uh, uh, one app is there that is the frac score frac score if you do that frac score they can predict the fracture they can predict this osteoporotic fracture in coming 4 years to 10 years if you do the dexa scan as also fill up some some uh, some uh, facts like your name age sex that there is whether there is a picture of uh, osteoporotic fracture figures they are not whether your parents have some history of uh, osteoporotic fracture prevents or not because osteoporosis may be a, a congenital disease it is a it is a familial disease so these are the uh, way by which we can so yeah, these persons those who have uh, the, the uterus and what is are already excised from the body by any means by the any any disease those who become should be should be very careful they can be very much prone to develop osteoporosis and do those persons do this screening test as also some blood test like the calcium phosphate vitamin d parathyroid test like this and do the dexa scan and fill up this frac score frac score you can you can have the this sort of uh, app in the google in the google uh, you can, if you search the frac score f r a x frac score if this frac score if you if you can easily search the google you can find out this frac score and if you fill up this frac score um, then you can they can easily tell what is your about what is your possibility of fracture in coming 4 years to 10 years this so you will be very much careful about it thank you thank you so much doctor any other question in any other media also bengali hindi yes ma'am i have a question Haan, sir, sir is ghee really needed for our bones and muscle building button button please repeat um, is ghee really needed for our bones and muscle building i can't get that um so i mean ghee that we use in kitchen for like you know that our mothers are like very uh, on to us that you have should have ghee you should have ghee you should have ghee for muscle building and everything so is it really ghee, needed ghee. ঘিতে <laughs> every cell cell membrane every cell membrane has some fatty layer so this if this fatty layer is going to become very very this is like insulation if the fatty layer is extremely good so that that that, that, that is external injury is will be very less to our body so this is very simple so this is known as so there is insulation of the body suppose if patient is very obese that may be led to several diseases but if that can protect her body from the different types of uh, injuries inside so if the if the very fatty person if he fell down that can lead to in, in younger age that i am telling in younger not the older age that can lead to the, the, the some uh, that, that the several fra severe fracture can 
uh, they may, may not occur in that in those cases not only that for the tissue level in the cell level in the cell membrane that is i'm already told the fatty layer if it is very good so that can lead to uh, prevent that injury from the external sources in that sense the key is basically it's a saturated fat so that is in, in our younger age that is that will very very helpful for development of this fatty layer of the cell but in the older age that may lead to some problem how it causes the problem in the older age in the older age what is problem that may lead to increases the because our activity is going to become less so if we do the uh, much more fat that is not burned in the younger age once we are getting fat that can be easily burned and see the burning of one unit of fat causes the severe energy in contrast to one unit of glucose burning you understand so in the younger age we are very active so that if we take much more fat that can be easily burned outside and as there are much more energetic the several you are very much active uh, active in that old younger age so that can be balanced but in the older age we are relatively inactive in comparison to the younger age so if we take much more uh, this sort of uh, saturated fat so in that case what will happen we can we very much fatty in the this obesity in the older age is absolutely contraindicated we should not be give it should not be allowed so that is the most important another one if we take this uh, this sort of fatty food in the older age that can hamper the absorption of other other nutrients that that, that can lead to some uh, in case there's some uh, uh, abnormal hampering the absorption so that is most important so we have to we have, should not take uh, fat in the older age it, it is younger it is okay so which sort of fat should be geared, should be taken in our yeah, older age that is the polyunsaturated fatty acid or the omega 3 fatty acid omega 3 fatty acid or polyunsaturated fatty acid this has to be taken in the older age because this sort of fatty acid is required for the the, the, the actual energy actual energy in the uh, energy process is a very short energy and that uh, that causes the uh, the increased function better function of the cells in our older age thank you sir and um, here we come with the end of our panel discussion so um, it was an insightful and knowledgeable panel discussion sir and the questions were really unique and uh, they are very uh, thoughtful as well so now i would like to request um, shreya ma'am and also um, sir devu sir to uh, share uh, their views with us as we come to the end of the event Thank you, Kushi. Uh, thank you so much. Rather, uh, I thought it is not the end. We can discuss for the whole day. Uh, so many things we uh, want to know also. So uh, first, I would request Mr. Devi Prasad Bose if you can uh, say something. Devi, the you are there, uh, but maybe. Devita, do you have any uh, internet issue? Because he is there. Anyone from Rotary want to say something? Anyone from Rotary want to say something? Anyone from Pratham want to say something? Yes, please tell something so that we can be encouraged to do this sort of program again and again. Exactly. Hello, ma'am. Even criticize, huh. criticize us. <laughs> criticize uh, this us. is Sarika Dhingra from the Adolescent Club. Yes, please. Sure. Uh, sir, this was a wonderful session, I must say. And then, uh, like, it took into task, like, it took uh, all age groups. You talked about the young people also. You talked to the elderly also. So that way, I was, I thought, like, found it quite enlightening. Uh, apart from that, uh, this one thing I was looking forward to, sir, like you told the exercise verbally, but then if you could have some map or something in the coming times, that would be a great, great help for us because the way you explained is good, but with the time, sometimes we tend to forget also things. So I, I remember all the exercises, like we were telling about the static exercises, dynamic exercises. So that was a very, very, you can say, nice part that sometimes remains... Uh, uh, unexplained many a times in many of the sessions so I, it was a great uh, you can say session and we're really looking forward to having more sessions with you like like this uh, great task 
so could you have those maps also ma'am uh, in the coming times kind of some charts or something that would be a uh, suffice brother i have discussed with dr pal uh, we have a plan for uh, exercise session also where uh, we will demonstrate you some exercise right oh, thanks 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 so much so my, my purpose is this all yes yes yes, yes. So, so in that case we in the next session we can do we can have some uh, figures as also specific exercises that should be done for specific disease so in that case and at the same time we can do the interactive so i will i'll show some exercises with some uh, some uh, some problems and i'd ask the audiences though, those who are any problem in that in that uh, areas so they can ask and we can sort out that this sort of exercise should be suitable for that so we can uh, help them in this manner very very wonderfully explained sir thank you so much doctor yep. thank you so much uh, so devita uh, are you available now yes uh, i'm there great uh, so yes, we want to hear something from you sir no i want to hear more from you actually dr paul because uh, so actually are uh, there you are being i i am being encouraged by you also so as in it's so that is why please tell something to encourage us no, i have been i have been uh, listening to you for quite some time because uh, uh, shreya is a good friend of mine and what, whenever she organizes this kind of program she lets me know and, and i i have the pleasure to attend the program and i have the pleasure to listen to you in fact if you remember last time when we discussed we said uh, let's have a physical program in calcutta exactly. which you kindly agreed and i'm requesting shreya also that you know next time if you can do it in calcutta sure and we will do we will just talk to you uh, beforehand and uh, we will do now today's program was very very useful meaningful and i'm sure uh, the people who did not attend lost a lot of things they should have attended this program they missed a lot of things but whoever has attended i think they have gained something they have got some uh, good thought uh, for you know for future and as you rightly said if we have any problem we will certainly contact you through uh, advanced care foundation thank you thank you for your uh, time and everything dr paul and uh, thank you shreya for organizing this event thank you thank you so much uh, thank you dr paul ebong apni amader shobshomoy help korechen i want to have uh, share some some words uh, so actually i am very much delighted to have this sort of uh, this interested people like you and also dr devi prashad so there are now so there are uh, sarika ma'am there are several other uh, interested people so see the, the, unless you are will be there so this sort of uh, program will not be there and this there are, uh, the knowledge is everywhere but unless the knowledge is shared there is no useless knowledge is useless so that is uh, i saw uh, dr paul yes. i saw one of my friends uh, uh, mr shamoshi sen shamoshi are you there shamoshi are you there no actually he, he no shamoshi he left left the meeting brother okay. shotobroto uh, yeah okay. good evening okay thank you brother shotobroto do you want to share something karon ami dekhchi onek khun dhore apni khub interest ne shunchen so it is really uh, good to see that as he has thank you so much say i am as it was a uh, so interesting uh, event in program number 1 number 2 i experienced that uh, so informative and it and in fact so useful that's why i tried to uh, listening uh, carefully and attentively thank you sir thank you in fact we all are uh, having pain whether mental or physical that's another thing but painful life is there so knee knee pain back pain any any sort of pain that's why i am eagerly awaiting uh, your next program uh, day, uh, just uh, just share said uh, no uh, shotobroto like, sorry shotobroto you can organize something in calcutta sorry you can you can organize a program in calcutta dr pal will be there shreya will be there you all will be definitely, there definitely okay 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 thank you I, 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 physically we can do that the, offline in, the, in rotary sadhan i am uh, not rotary yes, sadhan yes. the prabhat uh, where do we have here our meeting prakash bhavan short like prakash prakash bhavan you can organize a uh, program we will request dr uh, pal and say also to uh, join us okay we 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 done we will be uh, arranging it uh, with uh, other clubs okay great great mm -hmm. 
because we are planning for a long time so if you can do that so we can organize like this it would be really great besides rotary common people will be benefited একদম 